Okay, and for more on gold, we are joined by George Giro, who is Senior Vice President of Global Futures for RBC Wealth Management. In studio, George, great to see you. Well, thank you very much for having What's me. It's going really on? an interesting, exciting day, yes. believe it or not. It Tell turned out why. to be the kind of day where I thought it was going to be like watching paint dry. What, You're because of the, the Fed's end. expectations? Exactly. Everybody was going to be on hold. And then the so European uh, purchasing managers came out with something bullish for the euro. Dollar came off. Everybody started short covering. And the funds are back in gold because the open interest is over 5 500,000 contracts uh, as I count them. But more interesting, some of the open interest is in the outer months, meaning that there are people willing to stay longer than next February. How does that 500 level, 100,000 level in open interest compare historically? Why is historically, that an important figure? Historically, it's an important figure because whenever we've had up moves in gold, you've had higher open interest, higher moving averages, uh, higher uh, closing prices. And of course, the open interest is what tells you whether new business is coming onto the exchange or not. So you don't think this bump up in gold today has anything to do with people's concern about rising inflation? Oh, I think some of it does. Let's look. Um, sugar has been uh, near highs. Soybeans are soaring today. Uh, inflationary signs in the commodity markets. Um, for the first time, copper open interest is 20,000 contracts more than silver. Uh, at about 120,000 open interest, which I find very unusual. It means more people are hedging and for more reasons than before. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Now, around 11.37 an ounce, right? Gold is well off that high. The figure 12.27.50 cents an ounce. So are the factors behind that turnaround at play or are the factors that you're illustrating for us got some traction and are you still more bullish on gold? Will it retrace those highs? I think every time gold has moved up, it found a reason to sell off. Mm -hmm. Whether an unexpected sale from a central bank, uh, whether to Dubai or Greece or some news. Actually, Greece should have made it go up and it didn't. At that time, gold was in a sell mode. And the difference is uh, that when gold sells off a lot, it becomes an opportunity for people to buy. When gold is way up, it becomes a trading item. We was always used to say on the commodity floor, if you bought it at a higher price, uh, you're an investor. If you bought it at a lower price, you're a trader. <laughs> What are your predictions then? Where, where does gold level off in 2010, if it does at all? That, that, that probably is going to depend an awful lot on what happens to the dollar and what happens to um, uh, geopolitics today. Is the familiar formula again, higher crude for good reasons, um, higher uh, open interest, and um, the funds are here. So I think you could probably see uh, a range of 1,100 to 1,200 uh, in the upcoming year for gold. Bloomberg is reporting central banks holding about 18% right now of all gold ever mined are continuing to expand their reserves. And the reporter pointing out that this is actually a signal to sell. Yes and no, because don't forget, a lot of gold uh, is being off taken, investment demand is very big all over the world, and the same central banks that may be selling gold, uh, some of their other uh, central banks and other ministries are buying gold because that is one way uh, to bolster their own currencies. Got it. ETFs, gold mining stocks. Okay, that's play. very interesting. There are two major ETFs. There's, of course, GLD on the, uh, the trades 20-some million uh, shares a day, which is second fixed London, 400-ounce gold. But there's IAU, which is the COMEX 100, uh, which is the 130 uh, fixed price of gold. But that doesn't mean anything. They keep trading. Even with the ETFs? Well, you see, uh, the, the question is, are they really speculators or are they hedging against future inflation and lower currency prices in their own currencies? Another headache to figure out. Absolutely. <laughs> and and uh, for the most part, people who buy ETFs fully pay for their shares and they're not um, derivatives and they're not margining them. And in fact, in the United States, uh, ETFs in gold are treated uh, differently tax-wise um, as... Um, say the futures contracts and so uh, they're bought mainly in the kinds of accounts that hold on to gold and yes the big sell-off only resulted in 13 tons mm -hmm. coming out of the ETFs. George this is really an education today thank you so much for coming in talking about gold and thank you. trends behind price action again thank George Giro appreciate it.